So thank you for coming on and let's go ahead and pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you now for this opportunity to come to your people and to bless them with the word of the Lord on tonight. Father, I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart would be acceptable in your sight on tonight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. In your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So I want to officially welcome you out um, to this show tonight. I, I, I want to do something a little, I guess, a continuation of what I started on last week and try to get some more um, depth into it. Um, I started talking about a lot of the visions and different things that I've had over the years. Um, and for me personally, um, one of the things where that, that kind of, I guess it kind of weighs on me a little bit more than it would some other people. Um, and the reason I say that is because a lot of people have visions, all right? But the, the beauty of most th people, or the easy thing for most people, is they don't know what they mean. So a lot of times they just write it off as being another dream. But when you have a vision, you know, and it bothers you, and then you know what it means, it's kind of difficult to just go back to being normal. Um, for an example, Pharaoh in the Bible, when he had a dream concerning um, the, the fat cows and the skinny cows and the, um, and the ears of corn that were nice and fat and the ones that were thin and puny. It was just a dream to him. But, you know, the person that understood what it meant and knew exactly what it meant, it was more than a dream. It was a message. And so sometimes when I have those visions or even when I see other people posting dreams and things there, it, it, it kind of, it can be a challenge sometimes to carry it, but God gives us the strength to carry all these things. So now, um, you'd be surprised, is what I'm trying to say, is, is some of the things that I don't say anything about. So many things that I see, and I just, just sit there like a little kid biting my fingernail and say, should I say something, God? And sometimes I have to wait for the green light to say certain things, and sometimes I try to say things right here on this radio show, and I get flagged right in the middle of my speech, stop. All right, uh, that may happen tonight. But there's some things um, I want to share with you to sort of pick up off of where I, um, I left off. One of the things that you, you have to know, if you don't know by now, you need to know where we are as it relates to time. This chaos that you see in the world is too organized. You know, chaos is supposed to be chaos, but organized chaos is, it, it, it makes you wonder. It's just, I'm, I'm, I mean, when we, when we think about the riots that happened after the Rodney King um, verdict, that was not, you know, um, something that people were expecting. But now all of a sudden we got riots all over the world. It's like some kind of way this has been systematically orchestrated to another height, to another level. And it makes you wonder. Well, it makes you wonder. <laughs> there are those things that God has shown me that I know. Let me tell you something. There are very few things that happen in the natural realm that haven't already been pre-planned and orchestrated in the spiritual realm. We all originated from the spiritual realm. Before you was conceived in your mother's womb, in your father's mourn, you were a spirit being sent from God to the earth. And when you were conceived, it took you an estimated nine months to be prepared to enter into the earth's realm. And a lot of times things are planned just like that, months in advance before they actually enter into the existence of our natural world. So sometimes when these things are in the planning stage, God will enable certain people to See what's going on behind the scenes. There are times when I have um, dreams, I have visions, occasionally open visions. And oh boy, when I have those open visions, they are something else, all right? I can recall this one time I was sitting on my couch, minding my own business. Poof, open vision. All my eyesight just was, my regular eyesight was just suspended. Boom. And I could see these strange looking spirits dressed in all black with bandanas covering their faces. 
That's all I saw. And poof, blanked back out. What was that? Didn't make any sense to me. Then finally I was one day um, flipping through, I guess going to check my email or something online and taking care of some business. And lo and behold, I saw a human representation of those spirits that I saw. And did you know what I saw? I saw people calling themselves Antifa. And I stood there and I stared at it. I said, those are those same spirits that I saw in an open vision. Let me explain something to you. You cannot stand up against injustice. You cannot stand up against something that's wrong by doing something that's even more wrong. You're going to fight against what you perceive to be wrong by doing something twice as wrong? Where does that come from? Question. Does it originate from heaven or does it originate from hell? That's a very easy question for me to answer because I saw where it came from. And there were some things that God showed me about it. It died down for a while because it is a group of things, spirits from hell. H-E-L-L. That have originated and that's going around parading itself and it has help from people that are in high places that have given it a blessing in disguise as being something that is wonderful for society. But let me tell you something. The Word of God tells us that if we're not careful that Satan will deceive the very elect of God's people. We have to be wise enough to know just on the surface is this God or is it something else? You know? Actually, I mean, that's that's a fairly easy question for me to answer. And I would even go so far as to tell you that I've, I've, I've experienced some, some warfare with those spirits. Yep. And I currently know what they're working on behind the scenes. And sometimes I want to say something, but it's like, wait, wait, wait. Because what's really going on? All I got to say is God going to throw a curveball. Y'all going to pass out. <laughs> and everybody's going to say, what in the world just happened? Really? It was like everything was being planned so well, but the one puppet we needed to stand up couldn't stand up. You ever seen those puppet shows? You know how they have them stand up and, and, and make them work on their hands? And then all of a sudden, one of the strings break. Puppet goes looking the wrong way and falls down. You've never seen that before. Well, you are going to see that. You're going to see one of the world's most popular puppets pass out. <laughs> and God is going to get the last laugh. A lot of things that, that you're seeing that have been orchestrated around the world, they're out of timing. In 2017, what was it, 15? I think it was 2015, somewhere. I can't remember the exact year. I had a vision. In this vision, I saw three numbers. I saw the numbers 666. Six, six. That's all. No, no, no curtains, no, no light from heaven, just three big sixes in front of me as I was sleeping. Six, six, six. And I woke up and I knew what that meant. It's here. You see, a lot of the things that happen that are orchest being orchestrated are designed to pre plan chaos. Where these credit cards now has these chips on it to, to make you feel more secure. We're going to let you use a, a card that has a chip in it. Why? Because we want to process your brain to get used to a chip for purchasing things. And hear me and hear me well. Do not let anybody put anything in your hand or in your forehead. Because that is the mark of the beast. It has been talked about over and over and over, and if you're not familiar with it, Google it. It's the mark of the beast. You look up and all of a sudden some 
major retail store has been hacked and they've just downloaded 150 million people's credit cards and so all the banks say oh we got to find a more secure way to create people to protect people's identity let's put a chip on the card and then when you go into the store and use the card it don't even ask for a pin number <laughs> how how is that more secure that i could have picked up miss susie's card and just stuck it in there you didn't ask for a pin number but this is all about mass programming this gets a whole lot more deeper than what I really feel like I have liberty to talk about. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm itching. Lord, help me. Help me to stay positive and patient because I want to just come out and just put one of those posts up that just tells everything. I saw something in a vision like three weeks ago where these angels were preparing for something. One of those angels, two two of them, in the, were in the back, and they were holding up this like this little banner. This banner had these things written on it, and 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 when I walked in the room, I could see what they had written on it, and it was referring to the prophecies of Kim Clement. You know, this guy, he's a prophet. He's deceased now, but he made a lot of prophecies, and I, I thought it was so interesting that angels were preparing and they were making reference to some of the things that he has said. And you know, so how do you maintain your spiritual equilibrium through all of this? Well, number one, I'm just a pilgrim passing through this land. I don't expect earth to be like heaven. I don't. I don't expect everybody to love one another. I don't. In fact, let me shell shock the world. A lot of these things that you're seeing as it relates to talking about um, uh, writing a lot of wrongs, a lot of this is just political ploy. Okay? It's political ploy that you're going to continue to see over and over and over. If we wake up tomorrow and there was no more racism anywhere in the world, then that means the way that African Americans and blacks are exploited in this country could no longer, it would no longer be accessible to the people that use it. So they have to maintain a certain amount of racism to be able to have their car to pull every now and then. I see that. And so I recognize that and I try to stay positive and not over engage in some of these things because you're the only place you're going to get where everybody loves you is heaven. All right. Down here, take what you can get and move on. Be happy that you're on your way to a place where everybody loves one another. Okay? You know, heaven is a place where, think about this, you will have the capacity to learn everybody on a first name basis. Learn everything it is about them. You never run out of time because there won't be any time. Anything that you thought you wanted to do. You want to work on your golf game? Yeah, when you get to heaven, you can do it. You can perfect it. You want to work on your basketball game? You got enough lifetimes to do it. Well, eternity to do it. You want to be a, a, a playwright? You can do it. A singer? You can do it. Anything you want to do, you can do it. I, I think we often talk about the horrendous horrors of hell, but do we ever stop to think about the pleasures of heaven? And we complain about how... Uh, how bad it is here on earth, then that should be motivation to go to heaven. <laughs> I know. I know. You want sympathy now. Well, let me tell you something. It's kind of tricky trying to motivate blind people who are arguing with you, telling you, they can see. There's nothing more hideous than watching a man stand out in the middle of a road while traffic is going. And he has his eyes shut and he's complaining about how dark the world is. And the sun is shining. And sometimes you just need to open your eyes and really see for yourself and not what you're told. That's one of the things I thank God that somebody told me. It was a police officer of all people, right there in my little hometown. Told, 
That was a that was a racist town. Okay, I know racism. I don't need you to tell me when it when it exists. I I grew up around it. I'm from Mississippi. <laughs> My father was a civil rights leader. When Dr. Martin Luther King came through town, my dad was the chairman of the NAACP. So I know all about it. And I, I, I tell people, have you ever heard of the Sunflower River? Oh, no. Oh, really? It's a mass grave. If you could somehow pour back the roll back the waters of the Sunflower River there in Humphreys County and Sunflower County right there in Mississippi, it's a mass grave from the bodies that have been thrown in it that nobody ever talks about. So I know all about racism. I grew up in Wisconsin. But when I pay attention to the complaints of how bad it is, I have to step back from what I knew as racism around me and ask myself, is, are, are we more racist now than back then? Huh? I have to ask myself that question. Are we, it is the world, the U.S., is it more racist now? When you have uh, had a black president, um, you have athletes that are making millions of dollars. <laughs> you flip on the news and there's black people giving you the news. Black people have their own radio stations and their own television stations and they even call them black television stations. And I just ask a simple question to the entire world. Is this country really more racist now than it was then? Hmm. I'll let you think about that. I've already drawn my conclusions. I remember one day sitting in Indianola, Mississippi, just sitting there in the car. And I saw something that just blessed my heart. I saw this little white girl. And this little black girl outside on bicycles riding down the road together. <laughs> and that was over a decade ago. The world has changed. But what hasn't changed is the hearts of people. You can take down flags. You can take down monuments. Let me explain something to you. Hate doesn't live in a flag. Hate doesn't live in a monument. Hate lives in your heart. You can take down the whole world and stick up a picture of what you want to call the new world. Hate will still exist in the hearts of humanity. You cannot legislate love. You would love to be able to, but you can. Oh, you acting like you don't see what's going on. Oh, trust me, I see more than what's going on. I also see what's coming. And I also see what's planning what's going on. And it's much deeper than the natural eye can see. Much, much deeper than the natural eye can see. Why is this family dollars behind my house still closed? Ain't nobody knocking nothing out now. Ain't nobody knocking out windows. Why are they still closed? Why is it that it, it, it's like, why is it that some companies have already told their employees, you're going to work from home all the way to the year 2021? It ain't even the 4th of July yet. Huh? Why is that this overwhelming, over, uh, overbearing message now? That certain things are going to be this way for a while. Hmm? <laughs> certain things are going to be this way for a while. You know what? I think I'm going to have to take some of my talking offline. I don't want to get myself in trouble with nobody. As if I posted what I really wanted to say on YouTube, they would shut my channel down that night when that video hit. Do you hear me? I'm serious. If I just came out and said exactly what I knew, they would shut that channel down that night. I stood here in this radio station. Let me tell you, I stood here in this radio station and I said some stuff here one night and I recorded it. And do you know my phone developed a virus and went off and would not come back on and I could not get that video out of that phone? I'm telling you. This is the type of things that are going on to where they're listening to you. This phone is listening to you. Your phone is listening to everything that's going on. This is the age of observation. I had a vision one night where I saw what looked like these drones. But these drones, they were police drones. 
It was like one was for the federal government and one was for like the local government. And they looked like big eyeballs. And they were just floating. And they were just turning, just looking at people. And then they would move like it's a group of people over there standing. They would move over there and just look at them. The observation of humanity is, what taking, is what's taking place now. We've moved into that realm to where they want to know everything about you. Control the whole world. And this is Satan's sick way, sick way of thinking that he's becoming more like God. It is. I feel sorry for him sometimes. <laughs> you know, I, I feel sorry for the devil. I do. He's, he's got to be the dumbest individual in all the existence of all individuals. Because he's the one that started all the problems that exist and he can't rectify them. It's too bad. But don't let, don't let him deceive you along the process. The only fake joy that he has is to deceive you so that you don't get what he used to have. And God is trying to get us to see that we have to be wiser than that idiot. Okay? Literally. Now, I'm just getting started. I got a lot of things to talk about. Might not get to all of them tonight. But let me tell you something that shook me up two years ago. I was talking to someone the other day. And we had a meeting planned and we were going over some things, some dreams and things. And the person very detailed in the way he laid things out. And we, and we, when we talked, he had a list of things. We never got past the first thing because things start surfacing. I haven't even spoken back to him to tell them what I'm about to tell everybody. I mentioned something to this person, not knowing that the day that we were talking about it, I had dreamed that exact same event two years ago on that day. And so I called up one of my um, acquaintances and asked to pull up some information and see if you can find the date on that. And that date was the exact same day that we were discussing it, that I had the dream. Well, what did I dream? Well, let me explain to you this. There are times in, when I experienced those things like um, Ezekiel, experience in Ezekiel chapter 8. Go read it when you have a chance how an angel came, picked him up by his hair, and took him from where he was. He was sitting around some elders, and he angel came, picked him up, and took him to Jerusalem and showed him what they were doing, all while he's sitting there with the people. So he has like this open vision. There are times when I have visions like that. Sometimes I'm asleep, sometimes I'm awake. Um, this particular night, I'm in one of those visions. And the rule is, I know the rule is, whenever you go on one of those trips, don't talk. Just go along for the tour. They'll show you what they want you to see. If they want you to say something, they'll tell you to say something. All right? So this group of angels came and took me somewhere. It took me outside of the earth. Well, really above the earth. And they took me right off the coastline of California. I was suspended above the ocean. And all of a sudden, I saw waves. Like waves. These waves in the water. And the rule is you don't talk. I know I don't talk. These waves were so big until I said to the angels, do, do you all see the size of those waves? I broke the rule. It's not a sin, but that's just my rule. Do, do you see the size of these waves? Let me explain something to you. These waves were so big coming at the coastline of California that they were throwing aircraft carriers inland. They were throwing those cargo ships that comes with all of that cargo. They was picking them up like little rubber, rubber boats in a bathtub when you just sort of just throw them around. This is how big those waves were. Something is coming to the California coastline. I don't even know exactly when. I got an idea, but I don't like to be the one that says it's going to happen on this date at that time. In between this minute and that, I don't like it. There's no point in doing all of that. I don't see the point. 
But despite the fact that all of these things are happening, there's still a reason for you and I to believe that there is a hope beyond this world. I see all of these things happening. It's going to come. It's going to pass. And you got to still keep living. You got to still keep believing. Use it as an evangelistic tool. Heaven is much better than this. And anything you see going wrong on this earth, hell is much worse than that. And that should be all the motivation you need. All right? So, with that being said, I'm going to pray. Because we're living in a world where there's not enough prayer going on. There's so many opinions. Everybody got a word. My, 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 my members of the courage are listening. Pray more. Get people to pray more and stop trying to explain everything. The Bible says that men should always pray and not to faint. It didn't say that men should always preach and give people prophecies. Pray. I apologize to my YouTube audience. They're waiting on me to give them a word. Meet me when I meet God. Get on the prayer line. The folks that's there will tell you that's where the word is at right there. Rhema word. So I'm going to pray. Father in heaven, we thank you. We thank you for this day. Thank you for your word. We thank you for your revelation. I pray now, God, that you give your people courage and strength to endure like soldiers. And those that are on the fence, Lord, I pray that you would reveal yourself to them and cause them to walk to the cross and to surrender. And allow Jesus to come into their hearts. Yes, Lord. But we feel, oh God, that this is the season for man to get right with you. As your word says, mm, seek you while you may be found. And call upon you while you are near. We're praying now, God, that you would give men and women that desire and that drive to do just that. To overcome what's going on in the world and to walk in victory and not be frightened, oh God, of what we see. For we trust in you and we know that you will deliver us and keep us. So we bless you and we praise you and we give you all the glory. In your son Jesus' mighty and wonderful name we pray. Amen and amen. Well, that's about all the time I have for this week. But until next week, pray for me. All right. Have a good one. A little bit longer. Why for my teeth?